All right, peace ingredients, YouTubers. So Syria, let's just jump right into it. Um, I want to say this. I think we as Americans have to get into a space where we start looking at the world through a lens that's different than the lens that's been presented to us and that we've been conditioned to see through in order for things to sometimes make sense when you're talking about what's going on around the world. Because to be honest, we're often spoon fed a lot of stuff that sometimes isn't always true or it isn't always as it seems and we end up believing into certain things and then we get led into some nonsense and then we end up paying for it later down the line. That's pretty much what happened with the Iraq war. Um, but basically, long story short, if you've been following what's going on with the whole situation in Syria. So apparently, by the way, before I go any further, I'm not a very patriotic person at all. So if you're one of those, God bless America, you get excited at the baseball game when the fighter jets fly over during the second half of the national anthem, just go ahead and turn this off now because you're going to absolutely hate everything I say in this video. And, and, and to spare yourself the time of writing the dissertations in the comments section and calling me whatever you call me, save yourself the stress. Just go ahead and leave now, okay? Go to one of those other little YouTubers that are gassing us up and thinks that, that, that you know this current event going on in Syria is the greatest thing ever. Go to one of those videos. But anyway, back to my point, I just think um, we have to change our mindset. But anyway, my point, long story short, following what's going on with Assad. As you know, after World War I, the world powers decided that it was a terrible idea to use chemical warfare and chemical weapons during war. And, you know, so they decided, you know, it's terrible to kill people with chemicals and different things like that. You know, you can still kill people. Just, you know, have a little bit of moral with, morale with how you kill people. So no more chemical weapons. You can still do the nuclear bombs and all that stuff like that. And, you know, even the, the little, what's the, the white grenades that they used in Vietnam where you throw the little bomb and the, like the white fire. And even if you ran into the water while you were still on fire, you would still burn because the chemical reaction was just so strong in that explosion that you were just done. Like, you know, you can still use all that kind of stuff. Just, you know, no chemical, you know, weapons. That's, that's a little beneath how we kill people you know we have a little bit of class with how we kill people and so that was kind of the narrative that was pushed out there and so all these countries somehow agreed that it's a war it's a war crime to use chemical weapons and apparently Assad has continued to do this Assad is a guy over in Syria and he's done this before allegedly and he's done it a few times and I guess it just happened again over the past week and so the United States or at least Donald Trump and his people were like look um we are the moral compass of the world. We must go and we must protect and endure that everybody has freedom and liberty and keep everybody safe. And we must teach Assad a lesson. So we're going to go over there and we're going to join forces with the UK and join forces with France. And we're going to, you know, launch all these military airstrikes. And it's going to be an open campaign. And we're just going to keep it going until our point gets across. Like, it's going to be a sustained operation, meaning that we can do this for a long time. It's going to be a hold off. And, you know, this is a message to Syria and Iran and to Russia that, you know, you guys are on the wrong side of history and blah, 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 and, you know, all of that crazy stuff. So, in my opinion, this comes off as a very ego and pride-driven operation where it's not even about <clears throat> the well-being of the people that you're claiming that you care so much about, but it's really about... I said something and now I need to stand by it because I don't want to look like a punk in front of everybody. And, you know, I got ego and pride. And, you know, we have, what did he say? Smart bombs and smart, whatever heck he said. Hot mess. But you know what? The bigger issue that I have, can we be honest? By the time they finished this operation, more people would have been killed by the bombs that we just shot off and the missiles and everything than the actual chemical weapons that Assad used. Is Assad in the right or, you know, for doing anything like that? Absolutely not. I don't agree with him killing his own citizens. But then again, I don't even really know what's going on over there. Most of us have no, no clue what's really going on over there. We get all of our information from the media, which is all bought out anyway. So there's no telling what happens. The good thing is social media exists. And you can literally just go to people who are actually in Syria right now and see what they're saying. And man, it's almost the opposite of what we're being told, which is kind of scary. You know, we always have this narrative that, and this happens all the time. It's like a cycle where anytime we have something going on in the Middle East, every single time it's the same narrative. There's some kind of dictator and he's doing this and the people need our help because they're not free. And then boom, we end up over there. They did that with Slobodan Milosevic and everything that happened with Yugoslavia. They did that with Gaddafi in Libya. They did that with Saddam Hussein. And it's like over and over and over. But the problem is, it seems that every time we go over to help, we do more damage than what was already initially done before. You know what I mean? Like, I can guarantee you right now, because Assad apparently killed a few dozen people with the chemical weapons in his past attack. I can guarantee you we're going to kill a whole lot more than that just from collateral, because you have to think, if you're launching a missile, because the idea is they're shooting off these missiles that are going to be hitting specific targets, and the targets are supposed to be, 
you know, these places and storage hangers that have all of this scientific information and access to chemical weapons and all this illegal stuff. But the thing is this, if you have a missile that hits a building, a missile, you know, coming from a plane, coming from, you know, one of the little ships off whatever little sea that and flies over there at 18,000 miles an hour, however fast they come, it's a missile. So when it hits that building, Yes, that building explodes, but the impact of that missile hitting that building and the explosion is so grand that anything in the nearby area is also collateral. And then that's how you end up losing so many civilians. And that's how children and people who are not even in any kind of military end up getting killed. That's how when you look at something like Iraq, you, you realize there were 800,000 civilians who died in Iraq. People who weren't even fighting us, but they died as collateral. They died because sometimes our targets were wrong. Sometimes our intelligence was wrong. And sometimes we went and we blew up what we thought was some kind of, you know, hangar with some bad weapons. And it was a hospital or it was a school or it was a mosque or it was a grocery store. It was, it was a library. You know, it was somebody, it was an apartment complex. You know, and people just kept dying and it was collateral. And it's the same thing that we do. And mind you, this is not just limited to Donald Trump, okay? Because listen, as much as I would like to sometimes like Barack Obama, depending on what day of the week it is, same thing with him and the drones, okay? Tons of people die from, you know, these target missions where you blow up something and then everything around it also gets destroyed. And so I think we just have to start thinking of the bigger picture. It's like watching those movies when you have like... I don't know, the, the guy who's like a cop or a detective, and he's trying to go after the drug lord who's been smuggling cocaine from Cuba into Florida. And, you know, at the end of the movie, after the speed chase and the shootouts and everything, you know, that detective's boss comes out. He's like, you know what, Captain so-and-so, you destroyed three trucks, two semi-trucks, you blew up a library, you blew up a helicopter, you blew up a yacht. You shot eight pedestrians, you ran over two pedestrians, you shot a dog, you shot a cat, you burned down three houses, and you burned down two churches. But you got the guy. Good work. That's what it looks like sometimes when we're going and we're doing that. It's like the same thing. Like, yeah, you might have killed or you might have taken out a few ISIS people, but look at how many other people had to die because of that. And in reality, the people are left off worse than when they started. Like, they didn't even ask you for help. And looking at what's going on with Twitter, it seems that a lot of people who are in Damascus right now are like, America, we didn't ask you guys to come over here and do this. Why is that every time something goes on, you invite yourselves into our problems and you make things worse? Because the issue is this. We have to be honest. Pretty much any time we've gone to the Middle East for something, it's not because we care about the well-being of the people over there. It's something that they have that we want. And pretty much oil. You know, oil, 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 and some more oil. That's what we want. Same thing with Iraq. You know, the whole operation and doing Iraqi freedom. Somehow we felt that Saddam Hussein, who's already been in power for however many years, was so terrible that it's time to finally take him out. And you remember George Bush said that Jesus told him that it was time. You know, God told him that, I'm like, yeah, God told you to go and kill 800,000 people? <laughs> okay, so I, I, listen, at the pearly gates, if they exist, I hope that I get to stand in line next to George Bush because I want to be there when they push the button and he drops. I can't wait to watch that mess. But um, it's just, I don't know. And, and the thing about it is, we as Americans are so gullible and so patriotic. Like, Because I always say there's like a bunch of different Americas existing in the space, same space. The America I'm living in is so different than the one my next door neighbor is living in. I'm not a very patriotic person, but I, the, the guy next door to me is the most flag kissing, get pissed off if you don't even sing the national anthem. Right? Like he's that kind where, you know, if, if, if a certain kind of singer sings the national anthem and they do too many runs and oohs and ahs, he gets pissed off and pisses him off. I'm like, yeah, get a life. But, um, Two different Americas, but it's just like, what I don't get is this. Americans can be so fickle. Because right now, Americans are over here pretending that they care so much about these people over in Syria. And oh my goodness, these people have been killed by, you know, chemical weapons. Oh, something must be done. And I'm like, you know what? I agree. I really do agree. But you're full of shit. And the reason why you're full of shit is because, one, you don't even take care of your own citizens in this country. And I'm going to get back to that. But the bigger issue that I have is... The Muslim community, the Arab community, the Middle Eastern community has been so vilified by Americans for the longest. You mean to tell me all of a sudden now you care about the well-being of Muslims? Any other time you talk about Muslims are terrorists, Muslims are this, we need to go over there and blow them up. Now all of a sudden you want to pretend you care. You know, I, like, get out of here. As a matter of fact, Syria is on the travel ban list. So as we, go to, as we go over there, we blow up these people's neighborhood. And then they try to become refugees and try to come over here because we've blown up their neighborhood. And now they want to move into ours. Then y'all want to get mad. No, they're not coming in here. We need to have a serious vetting system. I don't feel safe. Blah, 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 blah. So it's like you're full of crap. You're, you're willing to blow up somebody's livelihood. But then when they come to you, 
for help as a result of something that you've indirectly done, now you don't want to help them. You know what I mean? You you spent all this time vilifying Muslims this entire time. Think about the week after 9-11. You know how many taxi drivers got jumped and beat up trying to go to work the day after 9-11? You know, because people just assume they were a terrorist. People who aren't even Muslim. People like, even people who are Sikhs who get mixed up and people assume that they're Muslim. They were getting jumped. Anybody who just looked the part, were, you know, they were being jumped, they were being attacked. And all of a sudden, you want to pretend that you care about that demographic. And the part that gets me even more is going back to what I said about taking care of your own citizens, people don't even take care of their own citizens in this country. It pisses people off when they find out that of all the taxes that they pay in a year, you know, you, you know, say somebody's making like $50,000 a year, you know, 27% of that goes to taxes. Of that 27% that went to taxes, $36 of that 27% went to the SNAP program so that some people could actually have some food and not starve. That pisses people off. Pisses them off. In a country where one in five children don't even eat every day, it pisses them off that 36 of their dollars went to something like the food stamp program to make sure that people eat. That pisses people off. All right? People are silent when you talk about police brutality, whether black, white, whatever it is. Um, as so many people are being unjustly killed by the police, and it seems that every single time there's a cover-up and there's a justification in um, with a lot of these police who are unjustly killing people and they're just getting off without any kind of reprimand, people are silent. Nobody has anything to say, all right? People are content and fine with the idea of, okay, two kids can live in two different zip codes and have two different experiences when it comes to their education. One can have the best education in the world, the other one can get the shithole education. And poor thing, the, ch the kid that's getting the crappy education, if his mother tries to register him in a different zip code at another school using a false address, she's going to go to jail. Or if the father does that, he's going to go to jail. People are fine with that. But then all of a sudden, you know, I mean, they're, they're sleeping good every night. But then all of a sudden, they want to be outraged about what's going on in Syria. But they're dead silent about what's happening in their own country. They're dead silent about the fact that people can't even afford college anymore because it's too expensive. It's been inflated so high to the point that the average American can no longer afford to go to it. So even the poorest person who pays taxes like everybody else, you know, those same taxes that go to fund this state school creates a state school that's too expensive for the person who's paying taxes to fund that school to even go to. How does that make sense? You know what I mean? Like you can't even afford to go to a state school that you want to go to that you're funding indirectly through your taxes because it's too expensive. And then there's not even enough Pell Grants for you to go because the government is cutting those as well. You know what I mean? People are, are, are content with that, but they want to be worried about what's going on in Syria. People want to spend all day talking about, oh my God, the national debt is at $20 trillion, blah, 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 blah. We must do something. But then when it comes to spending money to go blow up stuff, and we have billions and billions to invest into weapons and all that other stuff, everybody's silent. So I'm kind of like, I, I don't get this whole moral compass, moral authority of the world pitch that people try to put on, because it seems that it's very selective. It seems that it's only something that people value when there's an American interest involved. It's in, cause to be honest, what's going on with Assad is crazy. And from what I read, I think it was like 40 plus people that were killed by this bomb. But that's literally a bunch of different places all around the world that's, and it's happening every day. We're not saying anything. And I wonder why. I wonder if it's because those countries don't have anything that America wants. Because I look at Liberia and the civil wars that they've had between the 80s up until 2001. And the United States was silent. And the funny part about it is Liberia is a U.S. colony. You know what I mean? Like, it, it was like dead silence. So you had children going and they had to go off and be, you know, child soldiers and people getting blown up. And we literally did nothing. Towards the end, we came up and we're like, okay, here's some bags of rice. You know, that's all you're going to get is some rice. So, you know, you can make some rice cakes, rice patties, rice pudding, rice pilaf. Do what you want with the rice. That's all you're going to get. We're on our merry way. Merry Christmas. You know, that's it. No health care, nothing else. Here's some rice. Take it. Here's a bag. And then split it amongst your neighbors. Figure out how to do it. You know, that was pretty much it. You know, it was silent with the Congo and everything going on over there. And, you know, I mean, we've done a little, a little something here and there. Nothing major. You know, nothing to the point where the president is, is stopping cable to make a statement and say, you know, we must go over there and do this and do that. You know, nothing to that caliber. And so it's just like, man, it's crazy. And I think people just have to understand the experience of what it's like to live in what you call a war-torn country. We get the privilege of not having to experience that. We get the privilege of going to sleep every night knowing that as we're sleeping, there's not going to be a bomb that explodes outside of our house. Unless it's something from a homegrown terrorist like the Oklahoma City bomber dude. You know, like that's not our experience. For some people, that's all they've ever known. For some people, that's been their entire life. I have a friend who, I want to say they were from Sudan. They don't even know how old they are. They don't. They, they, there's a gray area of how old they think they are. They think they're between the age of 26 and 29. Long story short, their parents got killed. Um, the little village that they were from got blown up. All the paperwork got lost. There was no documentation of their existence. They ended up in all these different refugee camps. Then they lived in Europe for a few years and then they ended up in the United States. 
And so they don't even know how old they are. They don't know when they were born. And so it is kind of cool because every year he gets to kind of pick when he wants to have his birthday, which is kind of cool. It's kind of a therapeutic way to deal with it. But that's some people's experience. Some people who've been living for the last 20, 30 years, all they know is war. All they've ever seen is war. All they've ever seen is their neighborhood blowing up, their friends. Like, just think about that experience. Think about what it would be like if on a Monday you're living your best life, you got a job, you have a family, everything is together, and then the next day everything you know is destroyed, everything is rubble. Your wife gets killed, your children get killed, your family gets killed, your business gets killed, and then there's no help and no follow-up. It's not like the United States where, you know, if there's a hurricane or something, you know, FEMA comes and does the rescue operation, and after rescue operation, then the government comes in and their next mission is to try to make you whole again. You know, giving, you know, there's grants and funding and they try to get people to rebuild and then there's insurance. That's not the experience for everybody around the world. So I know some people think that we're really doing Syria a favor by going over there and blowing up Damascus, a densely populated area. I think one of the largest cities in Syria. What does it look like? You can't blow up specific targets in a metropolitan city and think you're only going to hit targets. You're hitting somebody's grandma, that's somebody's baby, that's somebody's dog, that's somebody's mom. I can guarantee you there's some kids that are dead that were alive six hours ago that are now dead because we thought we were helping. You know what I mean? And as somebody who's lived in both the United States and other parts of the world, I can guarantee you that there's a lot of people who don't look at us as heroes because we're not. Pretty much anything that we've jumped into where we were trying to be the hero, it was because there was some kind of special interest that would benefit our country in the long run. And what's really pissing me off about this situation is like, I look at somebody like Donald Trump, who's what, 71? This man's gonna be dead in like 10 years. And so he can sit here and jump us and, and jumpstart, you know, these, the beginnings of, of, of future wars because he's not gonna be here for the collateral and long-term effects of it. But people like me and my own children, we have to live through this crap later down the line. And so it's kind of like, I need us to start thinking long-term about the decisions that we're making. Us going over there and doing it and dropping some bombs does nothing to fix that problem over there. And now that's opened a larger can of worms with Russia and Iran and and everything else like that. And you know, at the current moment, the United States is kind of on like a balancing beam. And on one side is like the United States and NATO and some of our allies. On the other side is Russia and North Korea and China and Iran and all the other countries that are sick of our shit. And I'm like, eventually that balance is gonna go off sync or gonna go, it's gonna not align. And one day, hopefully not while I'm alive, <laughs> you know, it's just, you never know what's gonna happen. So it's just like, we gotta change our mindsets. Everything can't be solved by blowing up people and shooting up people every day, every damn day. Like, why are we so war hungry? It's terrible. And and honestly, it's like it seems like every president since like the 1920s, that's just been our go-to. Just blow them up, go to war. And it doesn't solve what we think it solves. It's expensive. It kills and, and takes a lot of lives. And yes, it may boom your economy if you're the one winning. But the amount of money that you put into it, that you have to invest into a war, it, it's not worth it. Look at what our debt was. If you go back to when Bill Clinton got, off, got, got out of office, the national debt was $2 trillion, which at the time people were like, this is out of control. We're spending too much. Now we're at 20. Okay, uh, We were at 8 or 9 when Bush got out. We were at about 16, 17 when Obama got out. Now it's getting closer to 20. Like It's just like we're spending so much money on bullshit. Bullshit! Like, that money could be going to things that would actually benefit the country. For this to be the whole America First era where we're trying to invest into our country and invest into people and in making our country be great again, we're doing all the wrong stuff. That money that's going to blow up Syria should have been going to somebody's STEM program in some school district. That should have been going to figure, like, there's no reason why we still have to pay forty and fifty thousand dollars for college when we have billions of dollars to go shoot up people. You know what I mean? We're spending two thirds of our budget on war, but only six percent on education. Another six percent on entitlement programs to help people who need, to, as you guys say, pull themselves up from the bootstraps, even though they never had a boot to begin with. You know what I mean? It's just like our our focus is out of whack. We just got the whole thing wrong. This is not how life is supposed to be. It wasn't supposed to be this way. And so America, a country that has so many resources has such a high poverty rate because our money is not focused on the right things. Our money is not focused on infrastructure and development and the sciences and everything like that to make sure that in the future things continue to be great. It's more so set up in a way where we just have to blow up our way through everything because at this point all of the other countries that we're competing with have everything that we have now. And so our only way to stay on top is because we have this imperial ass military because we are like listen the United States military is like way up here everybody else is not even close. That's like literally all we have is our weapons. It's terrible. Um, but anyway, I, I just hope the rest of the world recognizes that, you know, a lot of these wars, it's all governments. It's not the people affected by it. So I hope that people understand and recognize that what our country has done to a lot of these countries around the world, please don't associate it with me. Even though sadly it sucks that all of us Americans indirectly 
our funding is through our taxes, whether we want to or not. When you go to Burger King or wherever and you get that Whopper and you got to pay that taxes, you know, some, the, the few cents is going to kill somebody's child over on the other side of the world. It's terrible. Oh, goodness. Anyway, share your two cents. I'm out. Subscribe.